Okay, welcome to part two, segment two. Um, this part is going to be all about networking and infrastructure and why why I feel it's important to place it down early and and honestly, why? Why I'm placing it where it is. Um, and I just want to go over some subjects on the matter and hopefully it makes sense. So first things first, I want to apologize for the crudely drawn barbaric sketch here but i'm in a blank map editor and i just spent a couple minutes and i just drew a basic whatever this is and i just want to kind of simulate what it would look like when um, when someone would start from this point and of course you're gonna you're gonna visualize where you want your highway right and what i think we should be getting in the habit of doing is you know here's here's the highway we're going to draw right i think that we should always be doing them by 12 24 36 48 60 72 84 96 we want to we want to be doing these roads um in increments of 12. the number should always be divisible by 12. i think you guys or most of you guys know but you lay a segment down and it's 12 and you have two nodes. You lay a segment down and it's 13, and you don't get two nodes, you get three. There is a node limit to this game. There is a node limit to this game, and um, you want to do all you can to keep the to keep your counts low, right? So if you're just doing a bunch of chicken scratch roads, you're you're wasting nodes. You're you're there's way there's way more here than there needs to be. Like, oh my, look at all those nodes. Doesn't need to be that many. Okay. Um, secondly, if you get in the habit of always drawing by 12s. Okay, so let, let's just start over. So we're going to come in. And I don't, I don't, I feel like it doesn't really matter too much what you do outside of the main 25. It's just going to be a backdrop, whatever this is. So it doesn't. You know, just just get your just get your highway in, okay. So 120, that's a nice number, and then 120, okay. And then you would just connect up. Obviously, better than that, okay. Um, first thing, I do think it's better to keep a gap in between your highways. I don't do it um, for reasons I'll explain later, but just for more natural reasons and this is how they are okay um so we got our highway coming in it's 120 units meters units well, i think it's whatever okay so i'm gonna go farther i'm gonna go 96 because that's divisible by 12 so i know i've used the least amount of nodes possible 96 okay now um, let's say that your highway wants to take a left. Okay, there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. So we're going to make a 135 degree turn. So I'm going to go up a number divisible by 12. So let's 36 is, is usually a good one to get a nice smooth turn. And 36, and where's 135? Right here. Okay, always do the outside turn first. Always, always, always always do the outside turn first and to match it find your middle mark it'll come up and right there 34 34 and 135 degrees okay and this is what we get we have a node and a sister node node and a sister node again 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 we have matching nodes now let me show you what happens if you don't do the outside corner first 36 36 the degrees don't matter but it's 135 just to keep it simple and again i'm going to match it so i find my middle mark i'm on it it's 38 units 38 units 135 degrees okay see how my nodes do not line up anymore it's not really that it's not really too big of a problem unless we have a change in elevation Okay, so just let me show you what that would look like. Oops. 
okay, so I'm just, you know, if it wasn't flat and you're going up a hill. Okay, so we went up a hill and now we want to even out our roads, right? So normally what we would just do is get two nodes close together and make them the same height. There's no node beside it. Gosh, this is terrible. See how it's not, It's it, it needs correcting. So I'd have to drag this over. And now it's at the same point. So see, basically what I'm saying is you've done more work than needed to be. It just looks terrible. It's so much easier to have matching nodes all the time. So if you could get in the habit of always drawing by 12, I think that would save yourself a lot of trouble and it, it's just going to be clean, okay? Uh, let's get rid of that. Okay, next. Um, I think one of the big challenges with getting a, a knockout map is you know, if you if you imported a terrain party and just left it, it it's it's probably not going to be a good map, right? Because it's going to be rough. There's going to be almost nowhere to build because it's not going to be flat. And people like flat areas. And on the other side of the coin, if you just made a big old flat map, again, it's not. It's probably not going to be a good map. It's going to it's it's going to be found lacking. And I think you want that sweet spot. You want that sweet balance between buildable areas and unbuildable areas, right? Depending on your your area, if it's a alpine region, you're going to have much more unbuildable area, and if it's a desert area, you're going to have much more buildable area. But you need to have that balance between where somebody is going to easily settle and build and what's merely a backdrop. Okay. And what I think ties it in together so perfectly is the roads. Okay. Let me show you why. So I have two examples. I have two valleys. And again, this is just very crudely drawn. I just, I just started this you know, 20 minutes ago. So first things first, you're bringing your highway in. So I'm just going to fast forward and I'm going to pretend like we're just getting into the main 25. I'm going to turn on elevation so you can see that the buildable area is, it's going to be a hundred and some wide. It's a hundred and, you know, it's 128. Um, what is it here? It's going to be 84. It's not, it's not a big, big distance. So when we're laying these these roads i want you i want you to think that you're not just laying down the roads because it's required of you to lay down roads i want you to think that you're going to lay down these roads as if you're leading the player okay so i think what most people would do here is they would just run it down you know we're going to go 104 we're going to always go 12s okay so 144, 144, and you know they're probably going to end up turning, and it's going to be something like that. Okay, this is okay. This is okay, but I think it could be better because you got to understand that the road, the highway that you're laying, is servicing buildable area. That's what it's doing. It's servicing what the player can do in the surrounding area. So they're going to put an intersection here. Okay, so let's just, I'm just going to pick this spot. So what do people usually need? Like 12 on each side. And then they'll have, you know, they'll have their on and offs. Okay, so where does that leave you when it's done? Sorry, I'm all over the place here. So they're going to have a road of 60. And they're going to have a road of 
48, not for probably less than that. You shouldn't ever build too close to the rivers. Okay. And that's, you know, that's going to be more than likely their outcome just by what you've laid with the roads. Okay. Since this is such a short area and you guys have probably realized it just by me starting here, it's very obvious to me that the highway I'm, I'm not going to worry about number. I'm just going to do it quickly. The highway should be a lot more like this. Okay. This is a fact. Three-point interchanges are always going to be better than four-point interchanges in the game. And if you have a chance to build or to set up somebody to build a trumpet interchange where they can, you know, one main road comes off it. So we're going to get 100. Yeah, we're going to get a 108-meter road coming off here. And, you know, someone would have your normal... Things. Don't you think that would be a lot better than the chaos of a four-point interchange right in the middle of this small area? Okay, so this is just that's just one small example of what I mean by when you're putting down these roads, you want to be you want to understand what they're going to be doing after you. Okay, you're going to lead the builder into a situation like that where it's going to, they're more than likely going to build a trumpet interchange. Now. Go to the other side. Obviously, I'm not even going to draw it out. This is going to be about 300 and some units. It is. So obviously, 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 when you're looking at this, this is a huge buildable area now. If you had the highway hugging your hardscape, your unbuildable area, these roads are more than likely going to become traffic problems when this area is fully developed you can visualize the highway you know hugging that hill and you're going to have a long 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 arterial road with lots and lots of branches and it's going to plug up so definitely definitely here you're going to want to put your highway down the middle 100 meters 100 so so that's just kind of one way that i think i think um you know, you're just you're just thinking about the next guy here. You know, how's it, how how is it going to get built after I've done this? Okay. Okay. Um, here we are. I want. Um, I think what would be a really good exercise here is I'm just going to not redraw, but I'm just going to kind of fly over this infrastructure, and I'm I'm just going to tell you why I decided. <laughs> to I just decided like why it, why it is the way it is. Um, so let's begin. I'm going to start over here on the left side. So again, remember I I'm not too particular. I don't think it really. Don't overthink it. Just just get your highway to the main 25. Okay, and that's what I've done. I'm going to turn on the contours so you can see this a little bit easier. My first turn. Okay. I've intentionally kept the highway outside of the, the main 25 tiles. Okay, I've done that on purpose um, because I like to look at where people are going to build. I like to partition it. And I think I'm going to explain a lot more about that later, but I'm just, just I'm going to fast forward. Well, no, I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain it now. So when you start building your city and you see a sea of flat green grass it might get repetitive it might seem too much so again you know like at the process i have a rough sketch of the land drawn okay and when i start drawing the roads again i'm looking at my first buildable area and that's going to be this area right here. So this is a nice small pocket. And there's another pocket here. And this this dry river actually 
you know, I'll explain it later, but this dry river is actually cutting what I think is a large piece of land in half. So it's easier to build on. Okay. Again, I've kept this road outside of the building area. So what I'm pretty much subliminally telling the player is, hey, build an interchange right here. Okay. You're going to notice a pattern as I'm going through this. I'm just going to measure, but I like to keep straightaways of around like a minimum of a 72 units is what I think people need to get a good interchange off and have enough space for, um, you know, traffic to merge into whatever lane they need, they need to be in next. Okay. Cause if you remember from last video, what I was talking about is I don't want to leave anybody um, out of this. I don't want to leave anybody behind. And I have to think that, do you remember when you were younger and you probably, you probably spent a good deal of time playing SimCity? That's a core memory of mine. I, I found it, it was just great to, you know, come home from school and, and fire up SimCity 2000. And that's kind of what I feel like I'm doing to the next generation is I'm contributing to a part of this. And let's say, you know, first run in the game, someone's playing, they've chosen my map, hooray. I'm going to assume that they don't know how to build an interchange and they're probably going to download a couple of these off the workshop. And, you know, they, they're hard to place on corners. Like these things are very hard. Like if you don't, if you're not good, you want a nice straight piece of highway to lay down something like this. So anyway, you're going to notice a pattern with a lot of the things I do that I have a straightaway. I have a turn, a correction, a feature area, a crossing, something, and then I have another straightaway. And basically what it's, what I'm doing is I'm telling the player where to put their intersections. They don't have to do it. They can they can go crazy and do whatever they want, but but if this is someone's first time through the game, I'm just trying to make it easy for them, okay? Um, so again, so intersection is going to be here. It's going to service these areas, these areas, and you're probably going to find your way over here. Second pocket. I'm, I guarantee this is at least 72 in this in the distance, and it is. It's 84, so it's you know plenty of room to get an interchange in here. They're, they're more than likely would have the road closer to the to over here, just because you know you want you want buffer room for traffic to switch lanes and and uh, this and that. Okay. I, um, I try not to put too much into it. Like I said, I don't want to build the city for them. Unfortunately, I, I do really have to add this to the map because there is a, a thing here, a feature area. There's a little industrial pocket and uh, maybe lumber. And then I've kind of set it up for if someone wants to do a little fishing hamlet or, or farming. And here's another good example. I didn't even think about this, but I, you know, this road is uh, it's going to run into that. And guess what? It's 48 units away, so there won't be any <laughs> there won't be any nodes wasted. It's just I've just like I've just led the builder to a good and easy experience. Okay, um, but back to this. So I chose to connect this to this point for two reasons because I'm looking for areas that are going to be in between where I think the player needs to put their intersections, which is going to be here. And again, they're going to have one here ish. And again, and secondly, I just, I put it on the corner because again, it could be a new player and you know, it's, I just think that a new player would want to build on straightaway. So I'll just do the work of the corner for them. Okay. I had another little thing written down here, and I'm going to take the, the time right now to share it. Um, in real life, bridges are expensive, hey? They cost considerably more money and maintenance than stacking up the earth and, um, and putting a road on it, right? So don't be afraid to, to do this. This is, this is how a, excuse me, this is how I feel it would look like in real life is as much padded up dirt as possible. If it doesn't look right with like texturing, just hide it. You know, like I just, I just hit it with some pillars and you know, the usual. Okay, so again, nothing's gonna be serviced here. 
So again, straight away, it's you know you can tell you're getting the the idea. It's 84 or 96 units long. Someone can build a connection there. I chose to do the main the first connecting interchange here, and the reason why I did that is not because I wanted to build this thing or anything. It's just I thought this was going to be the hardest place to build one because we have a change of elevation unbuildable area here and it actually leads up to a building pocket which I kind of almost feared that some players wouldn't even know it's up here for you know some maybe nice estate homes with views on the ridge or you know whatever whatever your imagination tells you but that's that's simply just why I chose to build that interchange there okay um, again this mouse I'm still using this mouse that's dying it's the roller wheel no one's gonna build an interchange here so this was a perfect place for me to put the train crossing because I know nobody's gonna screw around with it there and again you know there's my straightaway that one's a longer one so interchange obviously this is this is probably gonna be their biggest interchange because it's gonna service a harbor area again a turn nothing's gonna happen here for the player nothing's gonna happen here and then I do have a little straightaway kept for them where if they wanted to uh, you know do like another satellite town or hamlet for a village whatever it's there and then again I'm outside the 25 tiles so I don't really care what happens just get it out of there um, secondly secondly is the rail I don't really have much to say about it um, other than this before any signs of mankind was in this land that you're building the first thing in the area probably was the railroad okay many 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 well where I live anyway in, in, in North America these railroads were the first thing that connected the East Coast to the West Coast and then towns would settle on the railroads just simply because there was a railroad there so wherever you think that your player is going to have their heart of their city or their city core their old town whatever you want to call it that's where you should have the railroad okay if you don't have it there don't worry about it it's like i mean honestly who cares but i'm just telling you that's you know that's how cities were made and and when I'm looking for a place to path my, my rail through the land, I'm looking for two things. An area where I can cross infrastructure where nobody needs to mess with it. So that was that's how I was able to build this, you know, the tunnel and retaining wall and all that. Because I know that nobody's going to need to mess with this area. And B, I do think that the city core is going to get built here. That's just what I think. So this, that's just what I think. So that's why it's there. Um, yeah. Next thing is, I did say earlier that I'm. Uh, I think it's better to have these highways split, just because that's more natural, and you know, there's less chance if you're going to upgrade these to bigger ones. There's going to be issues because they're so close. The only reason I do it is because I like to just kind of add a little bit of pizzazz and flair, and it's it's a lot easier when the roads are like one big unit rather than two separate ones, then it's much more difficult for me to do those kind of things, okay? Um, third thing I wanna talk about, back to the highways, is, is um, it can get kind of routine and boring. So if there's, if you ever have a chance to add some variance like this, I would say go for it. I just wouldn't force it, if that makes sense. Don't don't go out of your way to um, break from the mold. It's just you know I was do I was doing this and I had a turn and I was like you know what like I could probably just change this from the routine and it would look okay and I think it does. I think we're up here. I yeah just a couple like this road's higher because it's on a hillside. I just did it a couple times. I didn't want to get predictable or anything like that but but when you zoom out it's just kind of nice to see just you know there's something it's something different so um yep i think that's good and we're back um unfortunately nothing has changed 
with this at all since last time you saw it because of life. But um, but I'm, I'm choosing to come here last for this segment because I kind of wanted to tie it all in together of, you know, like this, this map is getting sketched currently and I have my roads down. So again, I would just like to kind of fly over and explain again why the, why the road is like that in relationship to the terrain. Um, so I'm, I'm going to start, um, let me get out of this. So you can see the main 25. Okay. So like, again, don't really care about this. Um, this is, it's whatever I'll work on it later. It's just of no importance to me right now. Um, I chose to do this just because this is a very difficult, um, segment I, it, I it just feels difficult and challenging you have three single lanes going into a three-way highway so i i went ahead and took care of this one and again you're going to see the repeating pattern of flat land you know 108 108 there's a correction and boy this, this is this could be a close one here no it's 100 so again we can have an interchange here and now I'm going to take it one step further. You can see that I had my rough draft mountain chain thing drawn here. And I felt that there was too much open area to the northeast. So I forced the terrain in. You can see that I, you know, you can you can kind of see this the simple shape. And I forced this because I felt that the buildable area that was coming was too great for this spot. So I was able to manifest a more reasonable building area just by that. And that's, I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad that we're doing this because now you can see why the, the second thing I do is draw the roads. You could, you actually could draw the river second and then do the roads. Um, but I think next, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter so much, but I just, I'll show you a couple things next episode on why I think it's better to do the roads and then the rivers. Um, well, I'll just tell you now. Because you're going to get a better idea of what your terrain needs to be. Because if you think about the highways, there's, there's servicing buildable areas, right? This is a good recap. So I'm correcting the terrain to make the buildable area correct for the highway. Once I have a better look at what I think the terrain and the hardscape is going to be, that's going to make an easier decision on what my rivers are going to look like. Doesn't that make sense? I'm looking for buildable area. I'm going to complement the building area with terrain. I'm looking for that balance between buildable area and unbuildable area. And now that I see all my unbuildable area, my, my mountains, my hills, my whatever, now I should have a pretty good idea of what my rivers should look like in between these elevation changes. Okay. Um, so moving on. So this mouse, I'm going to destroy this mouse. There we go. So we have a, you know, I, what do you call this? Under ramp. I don't know what you call that. And then we have another turn and a straightaway. This one's a little bit more difficult because I have straightaway, turn, straightaway. Um, I'm all in on this over here, so I'm not going to be making any changes. So what that's telling me is for the starting square, the starting square is more than likely going to be this one. And I'm going to simply just do that interchange. That's not just nice and easy solution to that. Okay. Um, so the interchange, I'm really liking this. I'm really liking this um, train causeway I got going on. And again, like I found, I found a reason to split the highway. It might be really, what's the word, flamboyant for some, but I think I'm going to stick with it. Um, this is a little bit advanced but I'm going to share it with you. I'm a little bit worried about giving the player on a map like this too much buildable space for that reason I was speaking about earlier about there being so there being a node limit because when I'm building a map, I'm a little bit different. Like I've got like, <laughs> I've got like 300 nodes just in this little area. Okay. And then you know, there's, there's more nodes here for this like old stone catwalk. And where's that bridge? 
I mean, I don't even know. Well, that's not so bad. There's like 30 nodes there. So I'm really conscious. I, I'm very fearful that someone's going to build just a monster on here and they're going to run out of nodes. And they're going to be like, oh, what is this? What a ripoff. So I'm just, I'm just, I feel like if I limit the buildable area just a little bit more than I normally do, it, I, it won't come to that. It won't be possible for somebody to oversee, like to go over what they can possibly do. Anyway, so there's the interchange. Um, I'm having some issues with this and I don't know if I'll change this because again, like your closest tack on point is right here. And it's probably going to be servicing a, a core. So it's going to be busy. And I, I would like this to not see. So, you know, I might have to do something. I might have to change this or it's OK. I'm still in that second draft. So I'll have plenty of time to make revisions. Um, anyway, the highway comes down. The highway comes down. And again, there's a plenty of straightaway for someone to build an intersection. The highway is on the other side of this tile on purpose because well they're going to start here and i want them to service their area first before they're reattaching to the highway because i'm probably going to like with this interchange i'm going to build I'm, I'm probably going to take care of a lot of this area so they're going to be working here and just another thing i'm i do have to extend this this road just a hair because they're going to start here and if they want to do something across the bay you know, if, if someone's not playing with mods or, or any fancy stuff, buying this tile is useless to them. They'd have to buy, 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 buy. They'd have to, they'd have to buy seven tiles by the time they get there. So just a little thing. Um, another, another relationship between terrain and highway and buildable area here. So this is someone's last chance to get a interchange before the highway leaves. Okay. So again, I have the buildable area limited to, I think what's, what's sufficient. Okay. And I have pulled in this terrain even more down here because I don't, I don't want too much down here because again, we're getting a long ways away from connection 400 units i mean that's a long ways so you know this will probably be density density and then maybe just a couple hodgepodge things or like a tourist or commercial or i don't know but i don't i don't want a lot of volume the builder is able to do down here because it's going to be a nightmare for traffic flow okay um, so the highway turns they can't do anything um and then this island i feel like i had to do this just because I have so much stuff going on here that I didn't want it to get broken so I'll just take care of that okay and then we're back we're back one more interchange before we're back to where we started um, and again every time I'm looking at where their interchange is gonna be I'm looking at are they gonna overload it are they gonna build a four-way in part like a four direction interchange or a trumpet interchange or what I've intentionally kept this buildable area only for fairies. Um, so I'm kind of like, that's really fun for me to have like a remote part. Um, and then I guess we'll, we'll, this is getting long this episode, but maybe I'll just talk a hair more about like how I'm leading players with what I'm putting in the map. So I have two rail lines coming through here. One is just like your regular connection between getting sims and freight through here. And it goes it goes through like where I think, again, is going to be the core. So I think I, I'm not right or wrong. I just think it's going to be here. That's where I think the normal, like someone would want to do it. And um, I've connected it with the crossings of the road. And then I've got it coming out of the roads. So, you know, they won't be messing with it in there. It's all taken care of. But then just like the reason why it's here is just because like I'm assuming someone's going to go straight and like, voila. It's just like a perfect everything. And this road doesn't connect to the outside connections. I'm just, or the, excuse me, not the road, this rail doesn't connect with the outside world because I'm assuming that someone will build a train station near their downtown and they'll just have a little rail that's moving their sims around inside the city. And why not just put it next to the outside connection rail line? 
makes life a lot easier. But yeah, that's honestly, I just thought, I just looked at that and I thought I'd show you the reason why it comes out there is because I've already planned it where if someone built a straight line, it won't mess with anything and it'll be out of the way. Um, so that's just, you know, another little example of why I look at roads as, as you're leading the, the player on a dance rather than just slapping them down there because it's a requirement. Um, I think I'm just going to look at my notes here. I don't think I've missed anything that I wanted to talk about. Um, so yeah, I thought that was pretty cool to share. The next one that I want to do is going to be a very difficult one for me. Um, the rivers, it's, I don't know when I'll get to it because I, it's going to be very difficult for me to show you what I'm doing with the rivers. Um, so if you could, you know, bear with me on that. Um, but I think it'll be a good one when it's all said and done. I think, I think, I think it'll really hit home. Okay.